the eye of the world begins with Louis Theron Telemann, the dragon, wandering through his palace, looking for his wife. There's death and destruction all around him, but he seems unaware of anything. A guest by the name of Elan Muri Tedronai arrives at the palace. The two have known each other for a long time, but Louis Theron has gone insane from the taint in Sidene and can't remember much. Sidene is the male half of the One Power, the magic system used in this world. Elan Morin Tedronai decides to cure Louis Theron from his madness to make him see the death and destruction he has caused due to his madness. After being cured, Louis Theron Telemann realizes that he has killed his wife and children. Unable to forgive himself, he teleports to a remote place to commit suicide by summoning so much energy that the only thing that remains from the death of the dragon is a new mountain. A long time later, we meet Randall Thor and his father, Tam Althor, as they're traveling to the village of Emmons Field. As they're traveling to the village, Rand spots a mysterious black cloak rider following them. Rand tells his father, but when they turn to see, the rider is no longer there. When Rand and Tam arrive at Emmons Field, Rand talks to his best friends, Matt Cawthon and Perrin Ibarra, who mention that they have also seen the mysterious rider. Once at the village, we meet a gleeman by the name of Ton Marilyn and a peddler by the name of Pat and Fane. A gleeman is someone that tells stories and performs music. A peddler sells goods and carries news. Pat and Fane informs the village that someone has declared himself the Dragon Reborn and that a war has erupted from this. The dragon is a prophesied hero in the Wheel of Time and he is to be reborn and lead the fight against the Dark One. Ever since this prophecy was made, other men throughout history have declared themselves the dragon, but they are always proving to be false dragons. We also meet two other strangers by the name of Lan and Moraine. When Rand, Matt and Perrin meet the Lady Moraine, she gives them a coin that they decide to keep instead of spend. Rand and his father, Tam, go back to their farm, and Tam tells Rand that more kids have reported seeing a black cloak rider. Once at their farm, Tam pulls out a heron mark sword, which is only given to people who have complete mastery over their sword. As they're getting ready for dinner, their farm is attacked by Trollocs. Tam manages to keep them off, but gets severely injured. Rand puts his father on a cart and heads back to the village to get him help. Back at the village, Rand takes his father to the Wisdom Nynaeve. A Wisdom is a village healer, but she tells Rand that she cannot do anything to help his father. Rand overhears that Lady Maureen is a nice Adai and that Lan is her warder. A nice Adai is a woman that has trained at the White Tower and can channel the One Power, and a warder is usually a man that serves as a protector to a nice Adai. Rand decides to ask Maureen to help his father. She accepts and is able to heal him. Moiraine tells Rand that the Trollocs only attacked him, Perrin and Matt because they are only after them three for some reason. So if they want to keep their village safe, they have to leave the two rivers for Tarbalan in order to figure out why the Trollocs want the three boys. Tarbalan is home to the White Tower, the headquarters of the Aes Sedai. As they're leaving the two rivers, they are joined by Ton Marilyn, the Gleeman, and Iwain Alvear, who is the apprentice to the Wisdom and also a friend to the boys. On the road towards the town of Berlon, the group is being stalked by a Drakkar, which are humanoids with wings that serve as overseers for the Dark One. Moiraine tells Iwain that she has the potential to be an Aes Sedai, and Len trains the boys with the sword. When they finally reach the town of Berlon, they are informed that the Children of the Light are in town. The Children of the Light are a military organization that focuses on finding dark friends and destroying evil and they really don't like Aes Sedai because of their use of the One Power. They are also informed that the False Dragon's name is Logan and that his army won a big battle against the Aes Sedai. During the night, Rand has a nightmare and Balsamon appears in it. Balsamon is believed to be the Dark One itself. Balsamon tells Rand that the Aes Sedai are going to use him just as they used other false dragons. In the morning, Rand speaks with Perrin and it turns out 
that Matt and Perrin had the same exact nightmare as him. Ran meets a girl by the name of Min. Min has the unique ability of seeing auras and viewings about the future of the people she sees. She tells Rand about the viewings she sees around him, Matt and Perrin, but she doesn't really know what they mean. Rand goes out to explore the town and comes across the peddler, Pat and Fane, who everyone suspected had been taken by the Trollocs at Emmons Field. Pat and Fane looks rough like he's been on the run. He tries to run away from Rand and begs him not to tell Maureen about him and then runs away. When he gets back to the inn they are staying at, the wisdom of Emmons Field, Nynaeve, is there waiting for him. She thinks that the kids from Emmons Field are being used by the Aes Sedai and wants to take them back to their home. Moraine and the kids explain why they can't go back, but Nynaeve seems reluctant. Later that night, Rand is attacked by a Mersro who are Shadowspawn that serve as battle leaders for the Shadow. Land comes to Rand's rescue and the Mersro disappears. The group decides to leave Berlon immediately and Nynaeve joins the group. On the road, they are ambushed by the Shadowspawn and a battle ensues. Maureen uses the one power to create a large wall of fire that keeps the shadow spawn at bay. The group manages to escape to an abandoned and ruined city known as Shadow Logoth. Maureen is exhausted from using so much of the one power. She says that the shadow spawn are terrified of entering Shadow Logoth and that they will be safe here. Rand, Matt and Perrin decide to go explore the city. They come across a man by the name of Mortis that tells them that he has found treasure and needs help carrying it out. When the boys reach the treasure, Rand notices that Mortis has no shadow. Mortis grows until he fills half the room and the boys run back to the group. When they get back, Moraine is very angry with the boys and says that Mortis is the man responsible for the destruction of the city. Land spots Trollocs in the city and they decide to run away once again. As they are leaving, a glowing fog appears and Moraine says that it is Mashadar, the evil entity that inhabits Shara Logoth and that if it touches you, it will kill you. Mashadar starts to kill the Shadow Spawn and during the confusion, the group is separated into three groups. One group is Rand, Matt and Tom who run down a river and come across Captain Bell Dalmon and his ship. The captain accepts to give them a ride to the town of Whitebridge in exchange for the coins Moraine gave Rand and Matt. Matt is acting very paranoid and distracted and it turns out that Matt took a dagger from Shadow Logos even though Maureen told him not to take anything. Tom teaches Rand and Matt to play music and use his props. Once they reach Whitebridge, they go to an inn and the innkeeper tells them that the false dragon, Logan, has been captured by the Aes Sedai and is being taken to Tarbalan. Outside the inn, they spot a merge wall and Tom tells the boys to run and go to Camelin as he attacks the merge wall to give the boys a chance to run. Tom does not make it out, so the boys decide to go to Camelin alone. They go from village to village, performing music and telling stories like Tom taught them, in order to earn food and a room to stay in. When they finally reach Camelin, they go to the Queen's Blessing, the inn Tom told them to go to. Matt is now even more paranoid and is not looking well. Rand meets Loyal, who is an Ogier, and they quickly become friends. Ogiers are creatures who love knowledge and peace and are great architects. When Rand overhears that the false dragon Logan has been brought to Camelin to be shown to Queen Morghese, he decides to go see him. As he's trying to get a good view at Logan, a beggar starts following him, so he climbs a wall to get away from him and get a good view at the false dragon. When Rand looks at Logan, Logan stares at Rand and starts laughing. Rand is then startled by a girl and falls down the wall. The girl turns out to be the Princess of Andor, Elaine Trakand, and her brother, Gawain. The stepbrother of the princess, Galad, arrives with the guards and takes Rand to Queen Morghese and her Aes Sedai advisor, Elida, who interrogate him. 
Elida foretells that Rana will bring a lot of pain to the world, but Queen Morghese decides to let Rana go free. The second group is Perrin and Ewing. They both decide to go straight to the city of Camelon, but they get lost. Eventually, they come across a man with golden eyes who introduces himself as Elias Machera. Elias is accompanied by wolves. He says that the wolves are his friends and that he can communicate with them and that Perrin also has this ability. Elias decides to travel with them and Perrin notices that he can feel the emotions of the wolves. They join the Tuathlon, also called the Tinkers, who are a group of nomadic people who live in wagons and are pacifists. The Tinkers tell a story about a group of people crossing the Aeol Waste, which is a desert region that is impossible to survive in, except for the Aeol who live there. The group of people came across a dying Aeol woman who tells them that the Dark One means to blind the eye of the world and slay the Great Serpent. No one is sure what this message means. Perrin, Ewain and Elias go their own way and start being chased by ravens who are considered to be the Dark One's own eyes. The wolves lead them to a steading which is a place that blocks the use of the One Power and the Shadow Spawn will not cross it. They come across the Children of the Light who are attacked by the wolves. When a wolf named Hopper dies, Perrin, who can now communicate with the wolves, attacks the White Cloaks and manages to kill two of them. Perrin and Ewain are captured by the children. Elias and the surviving wolves manage to escape. Perrin, who killed two White Cloaks, is also believed to be a dark friend by the Children of the Light. A White Cloak by the name of Bayar takes a special dislike into Perrin and constantly beats him. The third group is Nynaeve, Moraine and Lan. Moraine says that she can track down the boys as long as they have the coins she gave them. She also tells Nynaeve that she can also become an Aes Sedai because she can use the One Power. They manage to track down Perrin and Ewain and they form a plan to rescue them. Nynaeve cuts down the horses picket lines and Moraine creates lightning to scare the horses and create a distraction. Lan manages to sneak into the camp and knocks down Byer to rescue Perrin and Ewain. After their escape, Nynaeve heals Perrin who has a lot of bruises and scars from the beatings he received at the hands of Bayer. She also notices that Perrin has golden eyes and Perrin is worried that it could be the Dark One's doing, but Len assures him that it's not, that his ability existed and was lost long before the Dark One was even found. Moraine manages to track down Rand and Matt to Camelot. The group reunites and when Moraine sees Matt, she tells everyone to stay away from him. She says that the dagger Matt took from Shadow Logoth is contaminated with the evil that inhabits the city and Matt is now infected with it. Moraine manages to heal Matt but he now has to carry the dagger with him at all times until they reach Tarbalan in order to break the bond with the help of other Aes Sedai. Loyal mentions to Moraine the story he heard about the destruction of the Eye of the World. This reminds Perrin and Ewain about the same story they heard from the Tuathan. Moraine decides to go investigate the Eye of the World and she asks Loyal if he can take them to a way gate and guide them through the ways. The ways are stone doorways that were made long ago by the male Aes Sedai to allow the Ogier to travel from steading to steading safely. They function as portals and once you enter you can fast travel. One step in the ways is about a hundred steps in the real world. Loyal warns them that the ways have been corrupted by a black wind but Moraine insists on going. The group enters the ways and Loyal guides them. As they're traveling through the ways they spot someone following them but they can't tell who it is. They're also attacked by Machin Shin, the black wind that has corrupted the ways, but they manage to escape and come out of the ways into Faldara, a city in Shinar in the Borderlands. The Borderlands are the Westland nations that border the Blight, which is where the Shadowspawn come from. They meet the Lord of Faldara, Lord Agomar, who is getting ready to attack a large group of Trollocs at Tywin's Gap. 
a beggar is caught trying to enter the city. The group recognizes him as Pat and Fane. Maureen interrogates Pat and Fane and learns that he's not only a dog friend, but something worse. He's also responsible for taking the Trollocs into the two rivers in order to take the boys. We also learn that Lan is the uncrowned king and last survivor of the royal line of the fallen kingdom of Malkir that was overtaken and destroyed by Trollocs. Lord Agomar leads his army to Tywin's Gap against the Trolloc army and our group departs Faldara into the Blight to find the Eye of the World, which we learn is never in one place and only appears at a great knee. As they are about to be attacked by a pack of worms, the Eye of the World appears to them. Here they meet the Green Man, who is the guardian of this place. The Eye of the World turns out to be a pool of untainted sidene that was made by a hundred male and female Aes Sedai after the Dark One tainted sidene. As they are leaving, they are attacked by two of the Forsaken, Agenor and Balthamil. The Forsaken are a group of powerful channelers that served the Dark One and were imprisoned with the Dark One by the Dragon at the end of the Last Age. The fact that they are now free means that the Dark One's prison is growing weaker. The Emmons Fielders are quickly overwhelmed by the Forsaken, but the Green Man steps in and manages to kill Balthamiel, but in the process also dies. Agenor goes after Rand, and when Agenor sees that Rand is trying to use Sidene from the Eye of the World, Agenor tries to control too much Sidene from the Eye and ends up burning himself to ashes. Rand, who doesn't know what he's doing with the One Power, ends up traveling to Tarwin's Gap, where the Shinarans are fighting against the Trollocs. Rand manages to completely decimate the Trolloc army and once again travels to another place where he encounters Balsamon. Balsamon tries to turn Rand to his side. He shows him visions of his mother, Ewain and Nynaeve being tortured. Rand summons a blade of light and attacks Balsamon. When Rand comes back to the Eye, he reunites with Moraine, Ewain and Nynaeve, who know that he can channel. Rand is scared that now that he can channel Sidene, he will go insane like the other male channelers. Lan and the boys return from the pool of Sidene that is now empty and show what they found in it. A chest, a seal to the Dark One's prison and the banner of the dragon. The chest contains the Horn of Balir, which is a horn that when sounded, summons the great heroes of the pattern to battle. When they return to Faldara, the Shinarans are celebrating their victory over the Trolloc army. Moraine shows Lord Agomor the horn and tells him they need to send it to Ilion where it belongs. Moraine is now sure that Randall Thor is the dragon reborn.